latest on Cyclone Luban, which remains steady at 85 miles per hour and a pressure estimated at 975 millibars at 6 a.m. Gulf Standard Time, October 11th. It was located at 14.6 north, 58.1 degrees east. A Category 1 on the Saffir Simpson scale and a Stage 5 on the CDPS. Devastating if the storm was over land right now. Thankfully, it is still some distance away. Its slow movement is really putting that uh, status up on the CDPS. 271 miles from Hasik, 312 from Salalah, and over 400 miles to some of those locations in Yemen that the storm could go on to affect in the next few days. Uh, no determinable warnings in effect at this point and it is still just over three days from affecting land although tropical storm force winds if the storm goes further north than expected could strike the Salalar area over the course of this weekend. Here's another look at what's expected from the GFS model over the next few days. You can see initially very slow movement as it is right now. It's been in the same place for quite a while. And then gradual movement there towards the west could be further intensification in the meantime and then striking the coast of Yemen on Sunday or on Monday uh, and then moving inland towards the west and some models indicating that it will then curve towards the north and maybe do a bit of a U-turn over the Arabian desert and will obviously not survive very long over those hostile conditions that inevitably that area has. Sea surface temperatures though remain fairly warm, 27 or 28 degrees Celsius, although if the storm stays perched in that location for a bit too long, uh, upwelling could cause those temperatures to drop and the storm may have a bit of trouble. Uh, but here again is the model for the next few days, the wind field now from the GFS, greens denoting tropical storm force winds, so Salalar there could have some tropical storm force winds briefly on Saturday or Sunday and then the storm moving into Yemen and moving inland losing its tropical storm winds pretty quickly if it did make landfall and then moving inland. Uh, as long as it stays out at sea it still remains a very significant threat and the threat is still building. These are the chances of tropical storm force winds in these locations, 30% in Salalar. And that's because a lot of the other models take it a bit further south than what the GFS is indicating. It's a pretty close call at this time, and those chances could rise again in the next 24 to 48 hours if the storm moves north of forecast. It's a waiting game at the moment. Here are the current models. You can see one outlier there. It's actually the GFS calling for a Category 2 peak. All the other models there pretty much having the storm peaking right where it is at the minute and then gradual weakening as it approaches land. Wind shear though is going to remain low, it's just that storm's slow movement that may impede it over the next 24 to 48 hours. HWRF has it slightly further south than the GFS, the CDCX model even further south still affecting central Yemen as it moves towards the west. Here's a look at it right now then on the satellite imagery, you can see it's uh, very intricate eye formation towards the center of the storm there a pretty small eye uh, not too much convection associated with this storm as a matter of fact much less than we're used to seeing uh, but i guess that comes with the territory uh, with all that dry air lingering off to the west if the storm structure really declines it probably won't last very long the further west it goes will really spell the end of uh, luban but it will probably still get to land as a significant tropical storm and rainfall will